my my question here to the, the panel is before we turn it to your questions is given the results of the election i think we would all agree republicans in minnesota and the country have a mandate to yeah. not do what the democrats have been doing for the last six years in minnesota eight years at the national level there are a couple of things that we can do in this upcoming session to start to turn things around what kind of policies can we advocate uh, given the fact that we still have two more years of a democrat governor you know i think uh, democrats have and we've heard it on the house floor so often rest on the laurels of the fact that there's so many fortune 500 companies that originated in minnesota and that this is really the the state of innovation and we have this traditionally very large Anglo-Saxon workforce that had a very good work ethic and, and it was just you know, a good place to, to, to uh, grow a business. But in a closed caucus where Governor Dayton came and talked to Republicans, I challenged him uh, if this was the same Minnesota that gave birth to those 500, Fortune 500 companies. Um, the tax environment isn't the same. These these uh, Fortune 500 companies are still here in Minnesota, but and they're growing, but they're not growing here in Minnesota. They're not expanding jobs here in Minnesota. Uh, Peter talked about some statistics. You know, 2.1 billion dollars of taxable gross income is leaving the state every year, and uh, these folks aren't. Once they leave, they're not coming back. And when they leave, in addition to their income, it's estimated that they're taking about 20 billion dollars of capital with them. Uh, that capital is what we need for angel investing, for our medical technology industry, for for uh, investing and in, in innovation. And so I think uh, really some of the things we could do in Minnesota, we have 34% of all jobs and occupations now require a license to get up and go to work in the morning. This this is ridiculous because we don't we don't need that. I understand the notion that you want to make sure that somebody's competent if they're going to draw blood on you. <laughs> or remove your spleen. I get that. But, I mean, does a guy really need to have a license to hang sheetrock? You know, do we need to have a license for eyelash extensions? No. You know, there's there's lots of things like this that we could uh, make some reforms, and the regulatory reforms and the burdens. I heard yesterday on the radio there was a claim that uh, $18,000 it costs American employers for every employee just for the regulatory burden. So this is money that could be uh, given in the form of higher wages, higher earnings. Uh, that would all benefit our greater society rather than government thinking that they're smarter than you and know how to spend your money better. And that's what it's become. So I think there are some things we can nibble around the edges to uh, make a difference for folks. The, the thing I think that it goes above and beyond all of that and that I see as a contrast, as Peter alluded to with some of our neighboring states, is changing the attitude of the state's government towards business. Um, I used to consult for a company up in Thief River Falls, uh, a large company, a, a company that literally started in a, in a guy's, uh, in the CEO's bedroom 40 years ago, and he's built it into a billion dollar company that is basically the uh, Amazon of electronic products. And if you ever go up to Thief River Falls, it's right next door to the Arctic Cat plant. Uh, it's DigiKey. They do they're an electronics wholesaler. If you're if you're not an electrical engineer, you may have never heard of them, but they are they're huge. And it's just this homegrown business success story in the middle of this uh, in the middle of this sugar beet field in uh, in Thief River Falls. And you all remember when Barack Obama uh, went on TV and so said, "Let me be clear, uh, you didn't build it." <laughs> Which is stupid, stupid, stupid. About that same time, uh, the, the State Commerce Commissioner, Rothman, uh, went to a, a forum up in Thief River Falls where DigiKey has been working for years to try and get a permit to expand the Thief River Falls airport so they can fly FedEx planes directly to Thief River Falls to deliver to their customers around the world overnight. Huge, huge amount of business for these folks. And, and when complaining about this, uh, Rothman, uh, Commissioner Rothman, said, why are you complaining? You didn't build this. You, you, without state help, you guys would be would be nowhere. And, and to which to which they responded two ways. Number one, well, without our tax money and the need for a, a business, you need to support a business in Thief River Flipping Falls, fifty miles from the Canadian border, in the middle of a, of a sugar beet field. Um, you wouldn't need to build any of these things. B. For the last few years, they've been renting up all the warehouse space they could find in Grand Forks and Fargo, starting to run their flight operations out of North Dakota because they can get the permits and they have the runway space to do it. 
So apparently, well, the, 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 the folks at DigiKey didn't build it, the folks in Grand Forks and Fargo did. Somehow, paring back the state's government's arrogance about business and, and <laughs> teaching in its place in the great scheme of things would be just a huge step forward for, for any group of crusading pro-business legislators. Why are we not taking an active effort to eliminate the Minnesota state corporate tax and use that as a mechanism to reduce our spending and ensure that our corporations that are clustered here have an opportunity for growth and to hire more and more employees? Well, there's no question that the principled policy in, on this front is getting rid of that tax. There's absolutely no question that's the right thing to do. These corporate taxes um, really don't make sense from an economic perspective. Um, they, um, to the extent it makes any sense, there is maybe some level of public benefit corporations receive from our tax structure. So you can maybe make some justifications that should be something, maybe like 1.2%, but certainly not 9.85%. And um, and so, so yeah, the, the, the idea should be to reduce these taxes. Unfortunately, politically, it doesn't play well a lot of, in a lot of districts because you're just giving tax breaks to corporations. And so politically, you run into that problem. What's real interesting is that the manufacturers, the capital intensive manufacturers that we have in Minnesota are really the exception that proves the rule that taxes matter. We have among the lowest tax rates, effective tax rates, real tax rates on these capital intensive manufacturers in any other state in the country. And that's because when these manufacturers sell to any other, sell their products to any other state in the country, it's not taxed. They only get taxed on sales that are in Minnesota. And because of that, the tax foundations looked at this and they've compared these some model businesses app and they've done apples to apples comparisons and Minnesota is the second lowest taxes in the country when it comes to these capital intensive manufacturers and guess <coughs> what sector in Minnesota is keeping us afloat guess what sector is keeping us at, I told you we were average before our manufacturer our, our economy is kind of keeping pace with the national average the only reason we're keeping pace with the national average is because we're doing phenomenally better than the national average on manufacturing growth. And it's those manufacturers that are holding us up and they're the low tax people. So, I mean, that demonstrates the importance, I think, of lowering taxes on corporations. And it's not just these Medtronics, it's the corporations that are, uh, S corporations that are paying their taxes through the income tax. And we made things way worse for them with the fourth tier income tax. So for, to the question on what can we do moving forward when it comes to, and maybe come to some sort of agreement, maybe we can come to some sort of agreement on S corporations and giving them some tax relief from the fourth tier income tax rate, because we do have to pass a budget. So that gives us the opportunity to negotiate some things into that budget to, uh, that we want. And maybe that's something that we can, uh, we can come to an agreement on and we can you know, make a priority 